Hi everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Soulfully Casual. I'm your host, Matty Ice, and today has been a really weird day. I'm not even really sure where to start, but we'll we'll try and figure something out. Normally at the beginning of these, you know, I plug where to find me, how to connect with me, all that good stuff, and um, I think this episode it's important that you know how to connect with me because I think there are opportunities for us to talk to each other on a myriad of different things. So just to make sure you all make sure, excuse me, that you're all aware, um, if you're a first time listener or if you're an existing listener and have never connected, the email for the show is soulfully.casual at gmail.com. The Instagram is soulfully casual podcast and the Twitter account is soulfully casual at soulfully casual. So today's January 6th of 2021. Um, and Today was the day in the election cycle that the election results were supposed to be certified by Congress. In every other election cycle that I can remember, and I'm 38 years old, almost 38, um, this really came and went. This was the first time I was ever really aware that it was a milestone, you know, in this process. And that's probably on me, a bad civic student, um, you know, bad historian, all that other kind of good stuff. But ultimately, I think the idea is that Our election has been solid. Our election has been, you know, such a part of our democracy that the state has come and gone because the results of the election have been taken for what they are, the results of a fair and unbiased election. And throughout the course of the day, you know, I was working, but a lot of people were talking about what was happening on the news. And while I had my phone and I was, you know, tangentially aware of the kind of things that were happening, I didn't realize to what extent. Um... And so I had written up an episode for inauguration week that was going to kind of talk about the division in this country, you know, how I kind of came to a place where I am and in my sort of relationship with politics. And and I think some of that is important here. Um, My whole life, my whole voting life, I should say, I've sort of identified as more of a conservative leaning person. I never really identified with a party per se. Um, You know, there were parts of the Republican platform that I very much liked and it usually came down to things like government spending defense spending all that kind of thing and there were parts of the more liberal leaning or democrat platform that i identified with and most of that had to do with social issues gay marriage um you know things like that um so over the course of time you know i I identify i had formed my own opinions and I was able to participate in elections and made voting choices based off of what I considered to be informed opinions. Most of those elections, if not all of them, were not social media related. And and I mean that in, it's only been until very recently that social media has begun to influence these types of things. And I had to make judgments and opinions for myself based off of research that I had done, debates, you know, things I'd seen on TV. And all of these things took place in a very civilized manner. All of these things took place in a way that allowed you, the voter, to kind of understand what was happening, the two people that were in front of you, and make your own choices. One one thing I've come to realize over my time is that there are people who have been on each side of the fence for their whole life, regardless of anything that they hear or see from the other side. And I think that's just natural in life. There are some people who just will always believe something, no matter what you tell them. And that's human nature. Um, there's a lot of people who have always been Republican, have always been Democrat, and nothing is going to change them. They're going to vote that way no matter what. And you're never going to stop that. Like, that's always going to be a part of life. He seems to want to be divided. And it doesn't matter what the issue is. There's, there's a reason for us to disagree. And disagreement isn't always something that needs to be a barrier to friendship, a barrier to, you know, any type of relationship. It's just a part of being human. It's a part of existing. But there's something that has changed to the point where this country is so divided over politics and honestly just over everything that's been happening since Donald Trump has become president. Now, I want to say I did not vote for Donald Trump the first time. Um, I did not vote for Hillary Clinton the first time. You know, I made my own opinions on what I wanted to do based off the candidates and I chose that way. And say what you want about how I lost the election for Hillary and all of those things. As a voter, I'm allowed to make that call and as are are all of you. No judgment in any way, as far as I'm concerned, because that's your job, right? This This is our privilege to be able to vote and know that our vote is counted, and whomever you vote for is the choice that you make. I may not agree with it, but that doesn't mean that 
I get to tell you that you're a terrible person because of it. So fast forward four years. I don't think anybody in the world thought Donald Trump could ever become president. I actually remember being at work and hearing the announcement. It was in 2015 sometime and just sort of laughing at it because it sounded so ridiculous. It sounded as if he was trying to make the scene in Back to the Future 2 come true where Biff, you know, gets all this money and he's ruling the world essentially. And from what I found out, that scene was basically supposedly supposed to be Donald Trump. And it makes perfect sense when you think about it. And hey, comedy movies are supposed to be self-deprecating and and make fun of other people. That's kind of how it goes. But it came true. And it came true in a way that just totally surprised me. But I was willing to at least give it a chance in some fashion. I knew in my heart of hearts that he was not going to be a good president. My only hope was that he was not going to be destructive. And as each day passed over the last four years, all of us, at least all of us that are being able to see him for what he is, have seen that he has become more and more destructive. That his um, wants in his personal life to be noticed as a narcissist, to be you know, fully in power. Honestly, I hate to use this word because it sounds so drastic, but to really be a dictator has has driven him to create this this base of his that are are not really aligned with a party. They're not really aligned with you know what they think they're aligned with. They are aligned with a man and in a way that it's it's almost like they see him as royalty, as as some king. And it's really, really strange. So this election cycle was exhausting for me because I knew what I was going to do all along and it wasn't because Joe Biden was my guy. It just was looking at this from my own personal you know, perspective. We needed something different at the top of the food chain because the pandemic and so many other things had, in my opinion, been mishandled to the point that a lot of Americans were suffering. And honestly, the rhetoric that was coming out of the White House just did not sit well with me. The name calling, um, you know, the the you know racist remarks, xenophobic remarks, all of these things that I would never want my son to do. And I thought about it that way, and that's what really dawned on me one day was how can I describe to somebody why I don't think that he is somebody that I want to be president? And I thought all of the things that we've heard from him, including grabbing grabbing women, you know, taking advantage of women, not asking for permission. And then all of the other things that have come since then, um, you know, insinuating violence by not understanding that he is powerful enough to get large masses of people to be able to do things at his will that are against really what is human decency and what is against the fabric of this country in many ways. And that was what it was. It was like if if the people if I saw somebody that was on TV and they were doing what he was doing and that person was my son or my daughter if I had one, I I know that my disappointment level would be so high. I would never in a million years want to have taught him or her something like that. And that's just the way I've thought about it. And a lot of people can disassociate from that because they feel that they, you know, only believe in one issue and so forth. And to me, the totality of a person is very, very big. And I should say that I probably have friends who I've known for a really long time who are Donald Trump supporters. And that's not a barrier to us being friends and it never will be unless of course you start you know exhibiting behavior that i feel is you know personally not does not personally align with who i am you know if i see you shouting racial slurs if i see you doing things like that that's a little bit different it's overt behavior that i'm witnessing then i i can choose not to be a part of that but just because somebody aligns with him or disagrees with how i feel about him doesn't mean that it automatically means that they can't be a part of my life. For some people, that's how they are. And that's okay. Everybody's different. This is just the way that I am. So here we are today. And when I turn on the news, finally, I see a mass amount of people standing outside the Capitol building. To me, at that moment in time, I felt that it was okay. There's a lot of people that are protesting. I don't agree with the election fraud business. I personally feel that we have to have some semblance of trust in our system because that system has been in place for so long and there is not much, at least in my opinion, that is showing me that this system is fraudulent in a way that we have um, you know, the wrong people at the top. We have stuck to our term limits. We've never strayed from that except in one case 
um, at least in terms of like consecutive terms. There has been one president to have three non-consecutive terms, of course. But so I've always believed that the system is what it is. It's at our core. It's from the Constitution. And while this country is not perfect by any means, I, I do love this country and flawed as it may be in a lot of ways. And there's uh, uh, many, many episodes that I could do just on that part alone. But not everybody views our country that way. Not everybody exists the same way that I at least perceive in which I feel like our freedoms are something to be not taken for granted. Because if you go to other countries where they don't have a lot of these freedoms, so the stuff that you're seeing on TV, there's so many countries in which those people would never go back to their families. They'd be killed. Just saying something against your government would get you killed. And think about how much freedom we have to just say whatever we want in social media. And that's including no matter what you what you believe, whether you, you know, voted for the person or not, you can say whatever you'd like. And there's really no consequences, which is kind of how we've gotten to this place where all these conspiracies have been put out, fake news, all that kind of stuff. And when I see what's happening, when I see the lengths in which all of these people who believe a narrative that is just not true doing what they're doing it it disappoints me and what disappoint it, there's so many facets of my disappointment and it, like that's that parental thing where i'm not mad i'm disappointed i mean i'm both angry and disappointed because i think to myself what is this solving what is this doing for our country like they firmly believe that this person is so above the law that they're able to storm our capitol building i mean i mean think about that for a minute Think about U.S. citizens armed, some aren't armed, some are, going to our Capitol building and essentially, <laughs> I mean, essentially taking over it in full siege because they don't believe that the election results are what they are. I can't even, like, I, I just, I can't even begin to explain how ridiculous that looks, ridiculous that sounds. And it just feels like such an assault on what we have built over the time that this country has been our own thing. To think about how many people's lives were put in danger for this. To think about during a pandemic, how many people feel that it's more important to be able to show their loyalty to somebody who fairly lost an election and who quite honestly isn't really out for them. That's the mind boggling part to me is that these people feel like he is there for them when he only cares about himself. I mean, he's shown that in so many different ways over the course of the last four years. And yet we're looking at a bunch of white people and mostly white men going out there and feeling that their freedoms are such that they can do this kind of thing, that they can storm the Capitol building, some at gunpoint, smashing doors down, you know, getting in fights with Capitol Police, hurting people. It just doesn't make any sense, and it's just embarrassing, and it's so against everything that this country is for, this country was founded on. And I think what I think about most is, can you imagine if this mob was a mob of people of color? Think about that. I've already heard from people that are close to me that they feel that this is okay because, hey, you know what? It's the people's property. It's uh, They're just protesting. And I'm like, well, why weren't the Black Lives Matter people protesting? And look... I think we can all acknowledge that there is a difference between peaceful protests and then looting and other types of things. And there's always people that are going to be part of these protests who want to come in and ruin things for the rest of us. And that's in Black Lives Matter, you know, women's marches, every type of thing. There's going to be people that want to just go there and create chaos. But it doesn't take away from the larger picture. The larger picture of Black Lives Matter is that these people want to be treated equally on a systemic level. And... There's so many white people who just don't get that. There's so many white people who do not understand what it means to be racist on a systemic level. They see it as a personal affront to themselves. Well, if you're saying that racism exists, that means that I as a white person am racist. No, that doesn't necessarily have to mean that. But you not understanding that these things are real and felt by other people, other human beings, are turning a blind eye and having blinders on to the fact that this is real, man. Like. How can you not look at some of these statistics and some of these cases and not realize that race plays a factor in this? Like, as, an, as a white person, I know that my interactions in so many different realms come off completely differently than it does for a black person. 
I don't have to do things like jingle keys in a parking garage late at night. I don't have to worry about walking with a hoodie on. I don't have to worry about, you know, somebody faking, thinking that I have a gun or even speeding because those things go so differently than they do for a lot of other people. You know, a, a, a police officer pulling a black person over may feel like a life or death situation depending on, you know, the cop and the situation and all that. There are so many white people who don't understand that. And those folks that were out there protesting were protesting. They're angry. They're emotional. But their right to protest was the same as these other people's, except that's not acceptable on a larger level. However, I hear that it's okay to storm the Capitol because it's the people's property and this is their right. Well, that's not true, right? It's, I mean, it's true that we have a right to protest, but this is going well beyond. And I can't even imagine what the scene would have been like had it been a Black Lives Matter group and a peaceful Black Lives Matter group at that. I just feel like it, that's something that's not talked about nearly enough. Like, the amount of white privilege and just privilege in general of these people to feel like this is something that they are owed from their government to go and sit there, it's crazy. And you know what? If you're listening and you completely think I'm bonkers and disagree with me, that's okay. That's your right. You don't ever have to listen to this show again. Um, I just can't even fathom thinking that. Like, I can't even fathom thinking that, hey, I disagree with the election results and I feel like I'm just going to go to the Capitol with my guns and take it over because somehow that's going to make this all better. It's not. And it makes me sad. And I'm so glad that my son is less than a year old, so I don't have to explain this to him because he has no idea what's going on. <sighs> what a day this has been. I truly, truly hope that cooler heads prevail. But you know what I'm really worried about the most? There's a division in this country that is nowhere near being fixed. And it's not going to be fixed in the next four years. I can tell you that. I am somebody who voted for Joe Biden. I'm not somebody who finds him to be the most appealing candidate for a few reasons, but it doesn't mean that he's not somebody who can get this country a little bit more back on track. But you know what we need to do is we need to come together as people. And unfortunately, on both sides, the negativity has gone so far that I think it's almost impossible to come back. Like both sides of the aisle at times have treated the other side as the worst type of people. And I can understand both sides not wanting to right away jump and say unity because, I mean, for Trump supporters for the last four years, every single one of them has heard that they are racist and all these other things. And while we can all admit, I think a little bit that if you are supporting Trump right now, and you know you don't feel like this racism stuff is a deal breaker well that's another conversation i think we have to have but i don't ever really like to paint people with a broad brush and a lot of the rhetoric a lot of the back and forth on social media and even you know in the news to an extent has sort of painted that picture of us versus them no matter what side that you're on and it's really difficult to all of a sudden just because a democrat is now the president-elect say well we've got to come together for unity it's asking a lot of people to be honest. Like you're, you're asking people to put down grudges that they've had for four or more years. I mean, some of this has been happening since Obama was president, and you know, it's not going to take. It's not going to be four years. This is a culture change, a seismic shift for the U.S., and that's not going to be a one-term president. That's not going to even be a two-term president. It's going to take time. I mean, look at what you're seeing on the news. Look at all of those people who feel so strongly about a person and a person's um, you know, platform and stories, essentially, that they're willing to do this. That they are willing to put their jobs, their livelihoods on the line, their freedom, right? Because so many of these people are on TV and they're just you know having a good old time in Nancy Pelosi's office, but there's consequences to this, I would hope. I mean, if they're, if they're not going to get shot and there's not going to be, uh, you know, force that's that's being used, which is ironic because if there was ever a time to actually use force, this seems like a really good time to use it, especially when the United States government is attacked, basically. But I digress there. But it's like, you know, these people are on TV. So when they get arrested, what is their case going to be? That's not me when it's very clearly you. And a lot of them are posting on social media that they're doing this, right? Like posting selfies in offices, on the Senate floor, all these other things. So what are they going to do? Like, what's the end game? And that's the part I don't understand is I don't see what the end game is to any of this. But what I do know 
is that if you're listening and you disagree or you agree, we do at some point need to find a way to come together. We do. Like, as much as it pains me to be around certain people who might have this lackadaisical look to all of this, I still need to find a way to talk to them, to dialogue with them, right? We need to find a way to come together. I remember when politics used to be something that adults talked about at the adults table at Thanksgiving and kids weren't a part of it. It's a, it's a part of all of us now. It has bled into everything because it's part of our everyday life. And we need to find a way to come back together as human beings and citizens of this country. And it's okay to agree to disagree, but it's become so divided, so violent. And I just, I pray and I don't pray a lot because I'm not really a religious person, that we can get there, that we can find it. So if you're listening to this, I, I really hope that we can do that together. And even if it's just a small interaction between myself and a few people who listen to this, that's a start somewhere. Because I'll tell you what, this country needs to be better when my son gets older. I don't want my son and other kids his age to grow up in something that has become a thousand times worse than what we're seeing out there. This is still a great country, and it can be even greater, not because make America great again. It's always been great. It can always be improved. No matter how great something is, it can always be improved. And we can do that by starting to work together. And I know I'm going to do that. I know I am going to take little interactions here and there and try to find a way to do it. I can't get to full empathy with black people in this country but you know what i can do i can try to understand as much as possible i can try to ask as many people as possible do as much research as possible and just be around as much as i can to understand the issue as much as i humanly can and then when these things come up i now understand the emotion i understand the feelings to an extent there's little things that we can do if you know somebody who will never change sides just understand that that's who they are. And if they display behavior that doesn't align with you, that you feel is enough to cut them out, that's okay. That's really okay. But if you can, try and find a way to come together in some little, little fashion. It's asking a lot to ask the entire country to come together right now, but I think there is hope. And I hope that there will be a time in which I can come back to you on this platform and say, we did it together. So this was uh, completely impromptu. I had another episode lined up that was going to release on this day, um, but tomorrow really, and it's not going to. I delayed it for a day. Um, that one's about habits and about the new year, and none of this was foreseen, at least in this fashion. As a citizen of this country, I could not make an episode that wasn't about it, and so I did. Um, you know, this is just me talking into a microphone as a U.S. citizen. And I just want, I just felt like I could not continue the show and put that episode out tomorrow without saying something about this. So I really appreciate your patronage and your listening. I've heard from a few people over the last couple of days that they love the show and they're getting a lot of enjoyment out of it. That's totally what I'm looking for. I love it. Um, I can't say the, I can only say the reception the last week since I've come back has been amazing. Um, seeing the listeners go up, seeing the downloads go up. Um, you know, please keep that coming. Please share the show as appropriate with people because I need to do as much of this on my own as possible. The more people that you share it with because you genuinely enjoy this show, the more I can do this. And I want to connect and connect and connect. And eventually over time, the way I feel like we can come to some semblance of unity is hopefully through this. Conversations had on this show that are published for the world to hear. That's what I long for. I um, want to remind you again to connect with the show, especially after something like this. Uh, the email, soulfully.casual at gmail.com, IG account, Soulfully Casual Podcast, and Twitter at Soulfully Casual. Uh, I thank you again for listening. Uh, it's been a really rough day. The sun will rise tomorrow. And as always, I will see you all down the road. Thank you. <laughs>